I am 100% convinced that artificial intelligence is going to take over the world. It's already taking our jobs because this is insane. What's going on? If you're new here, my name is Josh Haynes. I'm a freelance filmmaker and I bring out videos to help you grow as creators. Consider hitting that subscribe button. I absolutely love Blackmagic Design. I've been saying they're always ahead of the curve, especially when it comes to DaVinci Resolve. And they just dropped 18.1 and there's a couple things in here that are just insanely good. Today, we're gonna be talking about sky replacement. Now, I have done other kind of tutorials like this where you can replace the sky. This is hands down the fastest way to replace the sky. Let's jump inside DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna blow your mind. So as you can see, the first shot that there is is actually a really nice shot. But when we look at the second one and we can see there's so much more detail in the sky, I even created a quick time lapse. Plus there's so many more things we can do. Uh, it just greatly makes the first shot look unfinished. So I'm gonna show you guys how we did this. We're gonna hover over the clip that we want right here. I'm gonna go inside the color page. So in here, we gotta do a couple things. First thing we gotta do is we gotta take this sky and make it look better. So we are gonna go to the qualifier right here and then we are gonna to go to the 3D qualifier. We're gonna click that, and in here, we are going to select the sky. So you can see in the left corner, we've got the picker itself, a minus, a plus, and a, you know, inverting it. Uh, we just want the normal picker because we haven't done anything yet. So we are going to drag on the sky just like so, and you can see it's starting to take it away. That's cool. Let's do another one. We'll add some more, just like so. We can see we need a little bit more. So we'll do something like that, and maybe something just like that. A quick way to see if your mask is good is hitting the highlight tool, and it's gonna show you what it has selected. So we can drag a little bit more if we need to clean it up just a little bit more. Again, you have so many other perimeters down here you can change, but I think all that's pretty good. So we're gonna shut that off, then we are gonna move on to the next step, which is sky replacement. Now, before we get to the rest of this and the magic sauce that really goes behind it, let's talk about the provider of this stock video clip as well as the sponsor of this video, and that is ArtGrid. I've been using ArtGrid for over two years now, and I've got to say they are hands down my favorite place to get stock video clips. I've said it before and I will say it again, it is high quality video clips being shot by filmmakers for filmmakers. ArtGrid is hands down the best place to get that high quality stuff you are looking for. I will have a link in the description below if you guys wanna check them out. Use that link and the code and you will get two extra free months when you sign up for a yearly subscription plan using ArtGrid. Thank you so much ArtGrid for sponsoring this video and other creators just like me. So we're gonna to go to the effects in the top right. We're gonna click effects. And if we scroll all the way down here, you can see that I've already got it selected sky replacement. You could also search it with the little magnifying glass. So we're gonna grab sky replacement. We're gonna drop it in here just like so. We're going to detach this node that is our first one that's got our picker on it and it's our original video clip. So I'm going to unclick it from the bottom half Again, I'll do that one more time. So if you get confused, you can't click it from the top. You know you've got it when it's the bottom half right here. We click it, it's done. So I'm gonna bring this up here. I'm gonna connect the green right to the green right here. I'm gonna connect the green out just like so. Then we can go in here, we can start messing with our sky replacement. We turn off, we can turn on. We could change different things we wanted to, but you can see nothing is happening. That's because we have not connected our picker out to this node. So we gotta attach that. Now you can see the mask is there. You can see that it's not a great looking sky. It's black, but again, we're gonna make it look better. So we got a couple different things in here. Actually, we've got a lot of different things in here. So we're gonna start at the very top. Very top, sky mask adjustment. So you can refine it if we need to just clean it up a little bit. Maybe we just need to fine tune it just a little bit. A lot of these are gonna be in your first node under the qualifier 3D. It's got a lot of these, but I do like that they have it in the sky replacement right there. There's not a lot that needs to be done in here, so we're gonna just close that up. I don't really need to do anything with this at the moment, so we're gonna close that up too. We're focusing on the artificial sky right here. So if we turn on our sky opacity, you could already see, but bam, we are bringing a sky in here. Holy crap. Let's say we uh, want to change some things. Maybe we want to change the color. Let's change it to yellow. Now we have an apocalyptic looking yellow or something that would be on Nickelodeon. 
I'm gonna hit Command Z because we're not trying to go day for night here. However, if you guys would like to learn that, especially with the sky replacement that could take things to a whole new level, please let me know in the comments below. You can just focus on the artificial sky by clicking on the preview artificial sky and it's gonna just show you these parameters. It's basically gonna take away anything that is in the foreground. So if we just want to fine tune it, maybe we want to mess with our horizon a little bit, maybe we want less blue, maybe we want more blue, we can uh, bring that down a little bit something like so but I'm just gonna hit command Z because I think it looked fine the way it was uh, maybe I do want to bring the height up just just a, a little bit just like that I think that's good and then down here we can see we've got cloud opacity this is where the magic can really happen so let's say we want to add some clouds we're just gonna bring that opacity up boom we've got some clouds now because I started adding clouds maybe I want to bring the horizon height back down a little bit just like so and in here on clouds we can change the color if we want to change the color we can do contrast cloud fill detail tilt shape I mean there's so many different parameters if we want to be more round we want the angle to be a little different uh, let's maybe say we want to bring the horizon up a little bit more you can add a lot of detail but that's going to get real weird real fast unless it's a really long shot shot so I'm going to do a little less detail I found it's a little bit more believable and then let's add more cloud fill so maybe we want it to be a little bit more cloudy out there and let's crank the contrast up a little bit more and then in cloud time this is where you can scroll and you could actually do a time lapse so you could actually set keyframes in this and make it be a time lapse so because I have this at the beginning of my video if I like the clouds here I could add a keyframe and then I could go to the end and then I could add another keyframe and it's going to move just like so. And again, because it's moving, now we can see maybe I need to turn the detail down a little bit more, something like that. And then down here, we've got Hotspot. Uh, this is one of my favorite things if we want to add a sun like that. If we want to add the size of it, we can make it be ginormous, small. We could make the size of the orb or the sharpness of it be different. I don't think it really works for this, so I'm gonna shut it off. However, wedding filmmakers out there, anytime you're trying to get that golden hour goodness and maybe you need that sun bloom right in the sky somewhere to tell your story, this could be a complete game changer for that. Then if we go down to sky position, this is where some of the magic really happens. Because this is a slow push in shot, it's really not that big of a deal. However, if you have some handheld shots, this could really make or break it. Uh, and here we can track the foreground to the background. So we are going to track it. It's gonna lock it all together, depending on your computer, that's how fast it's gonna go. Uh, and then again, sometimes if you zoom out, uh, or have it move over, you would have it spill to where the sky isn't replacing. This is where auto size for motion would fill it. It's going to auto fill that spot to make it fit. Uh, and then you could also flip the horizon. Maybe we like clouds on the other side, which I actually kind of do because the shadows are coming right here. So maybe we want some shadows kicking that way. Maybe we want sky integration. We can change the lens. So if we were shooting on a long focal length or a fisheye, uh, we could also defocus it a little bit. Maybe it's a little too sharp for the shot we're going. Maybe we want it to be a shallow, shallow depth of field. I think it's looking a little unrealistic on this shot. So we'll get that back to the way that it was. Exposure, we could bring it down. So if we want the foreground to be more of the subject that would be how you would do that if you want it to be even brighter you could of course bring the exposure up i think it's pretty good actually where it's at uh, and then down here you've got your foreground appearance so in here we could adjust the foreground and we could actually change the brightness we could bring the brightness down so if we were just set for the background uh, we could also check we could also do the temperature, so maybe it's a little too warm, maybe it's a little too cool, you could adjust that. You can also adjust the tint, so maybe we want it to be a little bit more green, a little bit more magenta, that's how you would do that. And then of course at the end you've got your global blend, so maybe it's too much sky, or you just wanna check and see where you came from, that's where it was, this is where it's at now. It is kinda of crazy, maybe you need to fine tune a little bit, bring it back just a little bit, you like that? I think that's cool, you can hop back over, and now you've got a really nice sky, and I think that looks dope. This is literally one of the small updates DaVinci Resolve 18.1 just came out with. There's so many other cool ones that I'm going to be talking about here very soon in some other videos. So stick around for that if you're new. Consider subscribing. That's it for me today. You guys are amazing. 
See you next time. Peace.